Okay, so we're going to be doing Budget Legend Aggro Token Druid, which is obviously a very aggressive druid deck, which there's been a ton of in this metagame of Angoro. Um, the only differences between the deck list I'm currently running and the one off of hearthprone.com is that there is only one Hungry Crab and only one Living Mana, uh, replaced with by two Vicious bludging, uh, Fledglings. The only reason I'm not playing Living Mana is uh, simply because I don't have two of them at the moment. And uh, the Hungry Crab, well, uh, I only have one of those as well. I don't think that's a card that's necessarily crucial. The deck creator, he put um, both the Galaka Crawlers and the Hungry Crabs into the deck. Uh, simply because I, I got at higher ranks, you're running into so much uh, Murloc and Pirates at that point. Weirdly, whenever I seem to tech for Pirates and Murlocs, I rarely run into it. Mostly it's just been a bunch of face-rolling Hunter decks, which this deck does pretty decent against, actually. Because if you out-tempo the Hunter, what does the Hunter do with an empty board? Um, yep, yeah, and my only thing is, if I was going to take this to Legend seriously, I would probably craft a second Living Mana, because that card is just insane. It's, it's really kind of what makes this deck this deck. At the same time, though, you don't really want to drop both, but it's good enough that you would want to put two in anyway. So, let's see, Budget Aggro Token Druid. I guess I currently got to rank 13 earlier from 16 or something like that, just grinding through a few games. Honestly, uh, people at this rank aren't that great. <laughs> they make a lot of mistakes, which is good. It's good that people at higher ranks make mistakes, because that means that you can win uh, without purely just playing uh, a strong deck, but by playing a deck better than other people. So, let's see here. Okay, everything looks pretty much good. I must protect the wild. So, Enchanted Raven, Mark of Yes, Siraj, those are definite keeps because of the average, uh, 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 very obvious synergy there. Um, turn 2, 4, 4, and draw a card. I actually like it a lot when I get a Innovate Heavy draw, because then you could just literally dump your entire hand on turn one, and pretty much it's like, okay, come at me, bro, I have four minions on the field, and Hunters can't really do anything against that. I imagine that like a, uh, an Evolved Shaman would also struggle against their early game Innovate play. The only one who would really win against that would be like a Horror Shadow Priest, which I was also playing some of. Maybe I should do a video on that. Because it's actually a pretty fun uh, deck. And I, I had the idea, but I had no faith in it initially. So this is obviously the Evolve Shaman bullshit. Which I think does not run Hex, but would run Devolve. So if he devolves that, I'm okay with that. Um, really, the 2 cost Mark of the Esarage was just like a cantrip anyway, right? So if he does use a card to get rid of it, it's one card for two. Um, okay, this is fine. Um... Hopefully he doesn't have too many Murlocs. Actually, you know, I was talking about the Hungry Crab. If I if I had a second Hungry Crab in the deck, it would be slightly better tacked against this particular matchup. But I think I'm already pretty fine here. Aggro Druid, oh man, Aggro Druid is just so strong. So he has Foresight in his deck, which is interesting. That kind of tells me that he's maybe a little bit more late game, and I want to watch out for AoE here, but I think I'm going to have to get maximum value out of this Mark of the Lotus right now. If he blows up my board, I'm okay with that. Because um, then I can Living Mana to follow it up. Um, There's actually no real way he can punish me with that. So... I guess I just go face. Like, yeah, you could Flame Tongue Totem, but that only makes an, a minion 3 attack. And it would be a pretty weak play with only one minion on the board, so... I'll just let him Volcano or whatever. Okay, so he has Farsight. I, I mean, Eater of Secrets, which is ridiculous. I, I don't see why anyone would do that in this meta. Um, do I trade a bit? Oh, this goes face. And I could just put him down to... Seven? Maybe I just do that. So I'll kill this Murloc, because... He might have some Flame Trunk Totem stuff going on. 
Um, but I'm not going to commit any more to the board just because the only way he wins, uh, the only way he comes back here is if he has Volcano or AoE, and if he has that, then these minions are pointless to play anyway. Oh, I think okay. Yeah, I guess Devolve would be a thing. So this is kind of bad for me, giving him extra cards, but it's not going to matter. The game's going to be over like in two turns. Alright. So that all be pretty good against his. Guess I do this. Pretty good against his volcano, interestingly enough. Might as well play this. Okay, that's interesting. Still not gonna bother killing his dude, because once again, the only way he really survives is if he has, I don't know, another Devolve or a Volcano or whatever. Okay, I'm fortunate that he got an extra card there. Kinda wish he didn't. But, yeah, Hyper Druid's just really strong. It's like, so he has some good answers. What's it matter? He's gonna die. Okay. So, he played into five mana. Actually, do I believe so, don't I? Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> I need to pay more attention. Easy game, control shaman ball. So, I'm sure that there are things I could have done better there, but I still won very easily because what the aggro druid deck does is just gains tempo so early that no matter what cards your opponent has in the hand, they have to use it inefficiently just to survive, which is amazing. Like, you can get hunters who use kill command for three damage or have to equip a bow on turn five and then hero power, falling way behind and taking damage to clear the board. And, and then you just throw more stuff on the board and they die. And that's basically how this deck works. So, I'm curious what kind of priest he's playing. Is he going to be playing the horror priest I've played recently? Um, let's see, probably don't want that, don't want that, don't want that. Do want Innovate. Um, idea here is Innovate is busted at just flooding the board early. But yeah, if he has Shadow Ward Horror, that's actually pretty good against Druid. As looking at the deck stats for that uh, Shadow Ward Horror deck kind of indicate. Um, so, I could coin this out, or I could innovate that out. If I innovate this out, and he has sh uh, a Shattered Sun, no, no, not Shattered Sun Cleric, a uh, Northshire Cleric, I get totally screwed. Hmm. If I coin this out, I have to innovate next turn. Actually, I don't. I could also Hero Power. I think this is a better play against the Northshire Cleric. Okay. A 3 mana 5-5. Five five. I'll take that. Pretty good. Oh, and uh, once again, to talk about the deck list, at the base cost, if you have two Ungu Crabs and Living Mana, or two copies of Living Mana, it's like 2,500 dust. Uh, with this exact deck list, it's minus 600 dust, because these vicious fledglings are pretty cheap. Um, here I guess I'm gonna throw down the 3 mana 5-5, five five, even though it wastes innervate a bit. Uh, or will I? Okay, so he hero-powered. What's that mean? He doesn't have... No, 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 he might have no other shadow player in the hand. Um, I don't want him to wreck me with, like, a, uh, the thing that steals a card. But that would leave me with two one ones if he did it. Alternatively, I do this, and he probably Shadow Ward deaths it. Probably don't want to play the Unlicensed Apothecary first. Not, not a very strong turn. It's sort of a waste of Innovate. It basically just became a counterfeit coin. Good card for rogues, not so much for druids. And here I'm wishing I played the uh, three mana 5-5. Five five. Although I could do that. Is Savage Roar better here? Do I unlicense Apothecary? Okay, so this... Hmm. 
I don't want him to heal. I think I do Savage Roar. So, I'll be kind of reevaluate that though. Um, unlicensed Apothecary, and, and you know, I really, if I was playing really seriously, I should have thought about it first, but Unlicensed Apothecary, the problem is that it locks down my future charts. Okay, so here he's probably going to guess it right, but are there any cards here that really benefit a Druid much? In a way, I guess. Probably Swipe. Um... Let's see. Kills one and a half, dude. Helps me push damage. Eh, Mark of the Lotus doesn't help too much here. So, I think we swipe. Also, swipe is not very good against Priest, so... I'm hoping he does something to kind of clear the board so I can justify using Living Mana. Um, he probably doesn't have Holy Nova in his deck. This jungle hides many okay. It's looking a lot like the Shadowwood War deck, uh, except it has Tower Creeper in it, so it might just be a general. Um, whatchamacallit? Uh, control Priest. So I, I don't want a Living Mana, because that's something you want to do after they do the board clear. Beetleberry. I think I unlicensed Apothecary here. Kind of threats him lethal a little bit. Just given how explosive Agro Druid can be, he kind of has to respond to that with either Shadowwood Death or a uh, trade. Oh, it's super bad with Living Mana, though. Okay, so he trades and then what? He does have Holy Nova, okay. So hopefully he doesn't have that other thing. Unfortunately, you can't mark the Lotus after that, because it uses all your mana crystals as long as there's space on the board. Um, Nightmare is he has a Dragonfire potion here, but at least he kills a 5-7 minion if he does do that. And if he doesn't do it, he's probably dead. Just showing the... Well, uh, is he going to hit a minion, though? Okay. So he draws more cards. I guess that's good against a control deck, but it's not really great here. Okay. So that was a really greedy play. Put him down to five. Mark the Lotus is super good on the top of a uh, living mana just because you're guaranteed to have one mana, but no more than that. I think if I was him, I would have traded and hit one of those, though. But I guess it does play around Power World Wild. Ooh, that's not good enough, though. I see what he was trying to set up for, though. Pretty close. And uh, that's going to be game. Pretty sure, anyway. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can't count here, but that's definitely more than 13. And Control Priest, whatever. So there's really not much advantage to like playing a control deck, because the aggro druid is going to get pretty much the same kind of win rate, but it's going to win a lot quicker. So at the end of the day, it's like, well, what's the freaking point? So, so far that was like, what, um, two for two on recording? I see it says no stats at the bottom, but that's actually completely inaccurate. Huh, why is it doing that? I guess just like how it have tabs to it. Uh, the deck tracker, that is. Okay, so Vicious Fledgling is pretty good to get on three, but I think it might be too greedy to keep it three in this deck, because most of the early game cards need to be played early. Um, I would like to have it, but I don't know. Should I keep that? Okay, let me think about his turns. Um, ideally, his turn one is going to be summon two one ones. His turn two is going to be hero power. His turn three is going to be Stonehill Defender. Um, 
If I don't hit my two drop, I can't break through the Stonehill Defender and hit him with vic uh, Vicious Fledgling. Uh, it's probably not worth keeping, I think. I want to keep it, but a 3-3 just isn't that great unless I can actually hit face with it. See? Living mana. It's okay, I guess. This play doesn't plus two, plus two wouldn't be great, but it uh, might trade into something well enough to justify. Something like that. Or oh, just hero power it. I think I definitely hero power it here. So he's playing an aggressive paladin deck. Aggressive Murloc paladin, which I, I think still has a lot of later game cards, but it's uh, overall a lot more aggressive than most of the paladin decks that are out there. Okay, sure. So he's gonna buff it now? Which is like, okay, fine. Um, I could swipe, or I could save that. I think I want to save it. So I can do this, this, and this, which I think is actually pretty good with Innervate. Innervate's just super good. Hmm. So yeah, we'll do that, I think. Play the Ravisaur run while I can. Okay, two one ones. I'll take that. Very good Adept. And we'll hit this, I'm more worried about the life total than I am about the damage. He can hit me face all he wants. Face damage does not matter to an aggro turret. So he's probably following that up with a war leader. And he'll get a good trade, but then I'll swipe it and they'll both die. And I'll be left with a board. But maybe even if he does clear my board, I have the living mana turn 5. But yeah, hitting the living mana on turn 5 is just so important. Which is one of the reasons why, if you're going to build this deck, you probably want two living manas, even if you're trying to play this budget aggro version. It's not that difficult. Play your turn. Wow, okay. A little unexpected, but that's actually maybe a little better than the War Leader. So do I swipe that? Um... I don't think so, it's not good enough. I'll just let him trade a couple times, get his minions down to one health. Probably anyway. Yeah, am I being too greedy? Uh, I am playing an aggro deck, so you really can't just sit around. Cold Light Seer is interesting though. Um, make oh, you know what? Shit. I'm making a bad mistake. I'm forgetting that there's a good chance he has the uh, gentle Megasaur. Okay, so here swipe's gonna be pretty good, probably. I wonder how much he's gonna play around swipe. Because if he does that trade and this trade, which it looks like he's going to, swipe sets up really. Okay, that's interesting. I mean, I need to trade here, so. Don't touch the air. Yeah, this plays so hard into consecration, though. I think I still do it. Because if he doesn't have consecration, what happens? And would you really play Consecration in an aggressive Murloc deck? No. Okay, what's he gonna do? Hit face? It's like, oh, okay, you get six face damage. Whatever. What do I care? Thanks for letting me hit you for 12. Mmm, you don't just exchange to the echo druid. What shits am I supposed to give? Eh, okay. I guess that's pretty good. Wow, okay. That's actually pretty good. Huh. Didn't think he'd be playing both of those. Um... So I'm gonna need to trade most of my board in. 
Actually, if I save it, do I win? Okay, so if I don't turn. So this is plus seven next turn. One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. And I go down to seven if I don't trade here. <clears throat> Tough call, actually. Um, I think I trade. Really? Curator and an, an index? That's a crash. Okay, sure. I might lose. That Spike Ridge Steed was really strong. Like, should I have traded with the minion? I, maybe I should have, you know? I was not playing around Spike Ridge Steed. And I chose not to hit that minion. Now if he has like a Tyrion, and I'm pretty screwed. So if if he didn't wasn't able to play the Spike Ridge Steed, his turn six would have been a lot more awkward, and uh, I might have won this game actually. So lesson learned: don't let uh, Paladins use Spike Ridge Steed. He still could throw it. I mean, a lot of cheap Murlocs. Does he have? Uh, okay, depends on what the adaptation is. Hopefully not HP. Divine Shield. Okay, I guess that's pretty good against Murlocs. This Deathling Dragon Lord is pretty funny though. Okay, so swipe goes there, but adapt first to see what we get. Uh, this is probably best. Because Deathwing Dragon Lord finishes the game, I want to clear his Murlocs as much as possible. In other worlds, I might actually just go face. Okay. Sure. That's probably an issue. But what if I draw something? Oh wow! Okay, yes, they come. Damn. Took him long enough to draw a War Leader, though. Seriously. Completely my bad there. I should definitely have played around Spike Ridge Steed. The lesson learned. Okay, so I can coin Vicious Fledgling out. Which might make it good enough to keep here. Um, screw it, I'm gonna play the risky, uh, the risky game. I think I will draw one drop. Ooh, Innovy, that's pretty good too. So I can just shut out the game on turn one, maybe. What's he gonna- if he has nothing. Okay. So the question is, do I think he has a flame tongue totem? Um, you know what, I think I do... believe he has a flame tongue totem. So I'm not gonna throw the game on turn one here. If he has a flame tongue totem and he plays it, I still kill his flame tongue, so... It's not exactly great for him to do that here. And if his turn 2 sucks, I can Vicious Fledgling. And uh, that's going to give him issues. Any day now. Wow, what a play. Okay. 
Anyway, I, I'm still glad that I did not play into Flame Tongue Totem by uh, innovating out the Vicious Fledgling. Gonna put that here just in case. I, I don't think Shamans have anything that you have to keep your minions separated on, like Betrayal or uh, what's the other thing called? Meteor, but it's still relevant. Is he gonna devolve me here? Okay, so he's just gonna die. That's uh, that's pretty good for me. I like it when uh, Vicious Fledgling just wins the game. Like an amino. Okay, Divine Shield, that's probably the best one. Can do that, can do that. Throw this here. It's kind of like, well, do what you want here. He uh, very well might be like a elemental shaman, or just dead. Okay, that was easy. So, like, the paladin had to try so hard to win, but I'm just like, okay, I out temple you on turn three, and you just give up because I have a vicious lich thing. So, wow, that was hard. Alright, let's, let's keep going for a couple games. Pretty funny, though. I mean, you can't blame people for playing Cancer when it's just so unsatisfying to play uh, the big decks and lose. It's just like, sure, wait till I get to turn A and I'm gonna free from Amber or Ysera, but you're already dead. Okay, so Malfurion versus Malfurion, probably Aggro Druid versus Aggro Druid. If he is a Jade Druid, I fully expect to just wreck him. Um, so this is a pretty good hand. Power of the Wild, not so much, but I can just put a turn 144, which is pretty strong. I mean, I'm not sure how you would stop that as a Druid. Especially if he's not aggro. So I almost certainly will be making that play. Hopefully he doesn't have Enchanted Raven and then Mark of Yesterosh turn 2. But if that is his play, he has to trade in. So. I will make that play first. And if he gets greedy and uses that and then goes space, I can punish him with a Mark of the Asarage again. And he doesn't have it. Okay, great. In that case, do I just go face? Probably not. Ooh, yeah, okay. I like this a lot better. Also notice that these Fireflies have two health, so uh, Swipe isn't going to hurt this board too much. Even if he has, like, um, Innovate Swipe. In fact, if he use, has to use Innovate Swipe, he almost certainly loses. Um, that's not good enough, so this guy's pretty toast. The question is, do I wait a turn? Hmm, that's a, that's a tough call. Do I wait to play Mark of the Lotus, or do I just do it now? So, I expect him to swipe to regain the board. If I play Mark of the Lotus, he can only kill one guy. Is that good enough? Yeah, it also means he can't hero power that. Okay, I think it's good enough. Also pushes two extra damage this turn. The way to win is to out-temple your opponent, especially in a matchup like this. I just have to make sure I dominate the board, and this makes it hard for him to dominate it. Ooh, finally had the Galaka Caller with me. Nice, vicious fledgling, bro. Uh, unfortunately, that greedy play is going to get um, absolutely shut out of this game, so let's maximize that power of the wild. Point Power of the Wild. This is a tough deck to play, I promise you. Uh, hit that. Hit that. Hit face. GG. If he living mana's here, um, I, he doesn't threaten lethal, so I can just ignore him. Actually, I think he might just be dead. Uh, let's see. 11, 14, 16, 18, 19 damage. Uh, he's not counting if he's not trading. Okay, so he's just pretty much doesn't care. Okay, sure, whatever. I mean, it's not like I outplayed him there so much as I just kept a better opening hand. See, Innovator's good. Innovator's super, super good. Very fair card. Uh, but, you know, Constructed isn't about fairness at all. It's about... Pretty much game breaking tempo plays. Like, you can play the Miracle Row with like the coin into the Vile Spine Slayer, and that's a sick play. 
because it just it, it shatters the board. Speaking of rogues, um, I don't think this will have trouble with rogue. I just, well, same plan as always. Tip rolling out, throw these away. Okay, um, turn one egg napper is not great, but not terrible. Will I get a better drop? Ooh. Well, he'd have to coin to stop that. So the odds of drawing something I can play next turn. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Hmm. So like a, a one in, about a one in two. I think I just do it. And he probably doesn't believe that I don't have a follow-up play to that. I hope. It is also good to get this guy out before the fan of knives as well. Just because that's uh, a card that would destroy that card. And he's a uh, Caverns Below Rogue. Interesting. Wisp. Wow, seriously. Is he going to Shadow Stop that? Okay. Nope. I'm definitely hero powering that, though. So I think a, uh, a Quest Rogue's going to have a lot of trouble against this deck. For obvious reasons. Quest Rogue needs a few turns to get going, and before then, it's pretty much trash to try to survive. So we'll see. Might market the Lotus. Well. Okay, do I have a sword run? No way, definitely Firefly. Actually, do I do I have a sword run here or do I? Uh, I think I like the mark of the lotus better because I get to kill a dude. And he could hero power that, but that does mean taking four damage. And he can't hero power it and fan and knives unless he uses preparation too, which would be using all of his resources. And I can kind of clean up next turn with a two-two and a hero power followed by living mana. So. I think given the mana currently going on, this is an okay play, but on turn 5 this would be pretty bad, because obviously, trade, trade, hero power, ban and knives, and I get wrecked. Okay, that's interesting. Why would you do that as a quest rogue? So like, really? You're not going to trade? He's just going to let me hit your face? Does he think I actually care about the quest counter? Why would he do that, actually? So, hold on, let me think about this. It's hard for me to understand. Maybe he has a uh, preparation? I, I mean, uh, vanish. So, this is going to want... Stealth, maybe? Uh, I think Looper Membrane. Sup's backstab at least. Don't really care about those guys. I guess the only reason he didn't trade was he didn't have mana to really make it beneficial. Like, he could hit that and reduce damage by two. Okay. So I do actually have to clear the void this turn as much as I can. Which is probably just going to be a couple minions. I think I do make the trade. Um, Don't touch the end. Just because it becomes a 5-5. Five, five. So I would trade a 4-1 and do a 5-5. Five, five.
And if he clears the board, it can make six two twos. Actually, you know, shit. He can hit me for 15 damage this turn. He might hit my face and then I have to trade, but then I can still make minions. Okay. I think I just do that. So he has five twos, he needs to use them to trade. Probably. Will he? So if he draws three charge minions, I'm dead. But if he doesn't trade and I draw Mark of the Lotus, he's dead. Will he play around Power of the Wild? I think he will. Oh, I guess he did. Okay. So now, once again, he needs three charge minions to win. Um... I'm going to ignore that possibility, and I'm going to go face, because aggro druid. So, double fan of knives would rack me pretty hard. Um, if he has three charge minions, which he probably doesn't, I would be dead. Uh, outside of that, yeah, pretty much. Oh, that was actually closer than I thought it would be. Okay, let's see here, a couple more games. Could probably hit rank 10 tonight if I feel like it. Malfurion versus Malfurion. I must protect the one. Nature must be preserved. Okay, so this hand... Druid is probably not playing Murlocs. Vavasaur run. Expecting too much. Swipe is actually not horrible, but... I shouldn't be playing for a backup plan, I should be playing to try to get the board first. And I think not keeping swipe is better for that. Okay, I got it anyway. So, I think I'm probably unfavored here. I could very easily lose this. Okay, because I play this, if, uh, if he does clear with a 2-3, I can later swipe. And kind of try to come back from this. Um, so I do have the Living Mana on turn 5 already, so that's not too bad. Nobody feeling pretty bad about this one, though. Okay, so is he gonna buff it? Probably. If I were him, I would probably buff something here. Nightmare would be Mark of the Lotus plus a Firefly. Oh my god, that would be so sick. Okay, so he's gonna do, uh trade here. I wonder if I put a 2-2 on the board, will he make the trade again? So just no buffs. And what does he have? Probably minions. Okay. Um, play a 3-2 if we're playing a 2-2. Two, two. I think that's correct. Because this can be better than a 2-2 two, two later on. Uh, I just have to have a couple minions stick to the board. Um, here he's kind of like... If he, he doesn't want to buff it, because, you know, it would still be a 2-3 and trade evenly. I, I guess that's better than it being not a trade at all. If I had what he had last turn, I think I would have to hero power here. Because it didn't look like he had a buff. And I'm not sure he has a better turn 3 play. Okay, so, so he is playing Murlocs. Interesting. Uh, I guess I'll be watching out for Finja then. Okay, Ravisaur run. Not great. Um, I don't like this. Uh, do I really use the coin on that, though? Ooh, 
play, use the coin to play two two. I think I pass on that, and that's painful because I know I can fall behind this turn. But I do have the swipe, so it might not all be bad. I have to remember about the Fenja or war leaders or anything like that. Hungry Crab might save me. Who knew that aggro druids were running Hungry Crab? I, I guess I read that some of the packages were, but um, I thought it was rarer than that. What? To do? Then again, this is the first one, so. It kind of makes sense. Fenja is pretty good. Okay, Mark of the Lotus on one minion. That is uh, terrible. And, uh, okay, like Fenja. Okay. Do I coin my own out? Ooh, I actually like this play, because if he gets greedy and doesn't trade into it, I get to kill his entire board, minus one guy. So does he have a Mark of the Lotus too? If he does, and then he trades in, I have to swipe for it too. So either way, this is actually pretty good. So do you have Mark of the Lotus, or nope? Mark of the Lotus, right? There we go. It's a good thing I uh, have that swipe, though. Surely he's going to trade. Well, actually, would he trade? Yeah, it would be too greedy not to trade, right? It looks so perfect, but it's actually bad. Hmm. <clears throat> you know, if I was him, I probably would have gone face. You know, looking at it through with the 2020 vision. Because it's either I have swipe or I don't have swipe, and if I don't have swipe, I just lose right there. And if I do have, like, Mark of the Lotus or swipe, it's hard for me to punish him for that. And also I get to eat that, that's pretty good. Ooh, this is really good. Hilarious, the Zagro Druid matchup is actually kind of interesting. So he's playing the Pirates and the Murlocs, and I'm playing the tag cards against it. Cute. Ooh, I win, because I attacked against you, I guess. Sort of. And win streak. Okay. Probably can just take this straight to 10 pretty easily. I mean... It's a strong deck. It's, uh, let's see, what did he say the Gwen Raid is? Uh, da, 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 da. No information. Okay, but he did hit 6,248 Legend. That's not a very high Legend. I guess it's okay for a budget deck, though. Okay, so Hunters play pretty much pure beasts, so tech cards aren't really relevant here. Uh, swipe would be good eventually, but I want to win that early game. Do I keep the mark of Yasirash? I don't think I do. I'd rather have Innovates and one drops. So, let's hope the mulligan gets lucky. And, ooh, we got an Innovate. That's always good. Uh, Galaka Crawler. So, Coin Galaka Crawler. Something, something, something within mana. Uh, I could do that, yeah. So, Pantry Spider only gets punished by poison, in which case, that's fine. So I think I like Pantry Spider. And if he doesn't trade, I have uh, Galactic Crawler into Coin Mark of the Lotus to kind of shut out the game. Um... I mean, he could very well play Crackling Razor Maw here, which he's probably going to. And if I was him, I'd... Okay, Poisonous, that's totally fine. Question is, do I want to play Mark of the Lotus here? So, his turn 3 is going to be probably a bow, right? Hmm, Mark of the Lotus Living Mana... So this is happening for sure, right? It is. Um, I think Mark of the Lotus is stronger with the living mana here. 
I'm okay with hero powering that next that next turn if he decides to uh, make that trade here. So like he equips a bow, it's like whatever. And I wish I had a swipe. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. So summon a 3-2, of course, hit that. Question is, does he play Explosive Trap? I'm thinking no. Hey, good morning, Spears. Just playing some Echo Druid here. I, I don't know. I think I have like a love-hate relationship with this deck. Because I know it's cancer, but it is pretty fun to play. So uh, that's going to get Hound Mastered, right? So do I want to trade and in, trade into it? Is there a reason to? Okay, so he Hound Masters it, and that doesn't trade into a 4-4, four four, does it? So I think I just want to do this. Also, how does this punish me? The Auk, kinda. I'm gonna ignore it. Ooh, wow, that's... okay. The funny thing is, I still get to hit face. <laughs> and living mana. Uh, the living mana, you know. He could have that Unleash the Hounds, couldn't he? Let's see, Wind Fury? Ooh, nice. Okay, I'm good at this game, apparently. Uh, stealth? I think that's best, actually. Yeah. Okay, how do you survive this as a hunter without explosive shot? I mean, uh, explosive trap. I don't think you do, and I don't think he has explosive trap. And if he does, oh, okay, yeah. Unleash the hounds, fully expected. Does he have like a timber wolf? Vicious fledgling. What do you think you are, druid? You look pretty dead to me. You better trade, dude. <laughs> Aggro druid. What kind of cancer bullshit is this? Ooh, still dead? Looks like you are, bro. Pretty fair card. Yep. Ooh, that's 11 damage to the face. And, uh, yeah. Gee, I don't know. I think I'll just trade. What's he gonna do? Hit it with a bow? Oh, poor aggro hunter. Can't even kill a poor druid. So sad. Got out cancered. Oh, he's gonna taunt it up. Give it poisonous. So what's the record currently? 6-1? Something like that? Or is it 7-1? Oh, it's 7-1. Okay. Pretty easy, I gotta say. Okay, we'll just do one more here, just to get, you know, rank 10, and then I'll change to another one. Hey, if you're having trouble, like, uh, winning Hearthstone matches, just that deck. It's what almost everybody does. And it really does improve your win rate so easily. It's like, in my opinion, the real difficulty of Hearthstone is creating a viable deck that uh, is unique, interesting, and actually good. But just navigating an easy deck like Aggro Druid or Midrange Hunter or even Pirate Warrior, yeah, you, you get the hang of it after a few matches. I must protect the wild. So, I would like a Galaka Crawler here. Um, I'm not sure if it's face. Most of the tournament players have been playing Taunt Warrior by the looks of it. Instead of, uh, well, what do I do here? 
Is that even good? I don't know if that's good. I'm just gonna full mulligan. I, I don't want to get waxed. Am I crazy? I don't know. I got a Galaka Crawler from it. Was that a good play? We'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. Like, if he does turn one's, uh... Turn one things. Then Galaka Crawler will be there for that. I remember playing the Yu-Gi-Oh card game. I completely sucked at that. Um, long time ago... Oh, it is pirates. Okay, so I win. I'm in charge. I'm in charge now. Skill deck, sixteen hundred dust. I raise your pirates with a seven and three four. It kills the dude. I kind of wish I had the other one to like kill that. Oh man. Well, at least it's a good trade here, and I can deny him like. Ooh, that's interesting. I guess I'd do that. You know, he has to kill that one way or another. And they can't do that with a War Axe, and pirates don't play Execute. Uh, yeah, anyway, the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. Uh, I played cards that I wanted to play, and uh, that's not how you win card games. <laughs> like, just a random assortment of cards, like Summon Skull and Time Wizard, and then it's like, hey, Time Wizard has a 50-50 to ruin your own game. So, um, Joy Fish is fledgling here? Wouldn't he have War Axed that? Okay, so if I play this, he has to kill it, right? What to do? And if I play these... I don't think I need to rush his face down, I need to run him out of stuff. So I'm gonna play the Pantry Spider here. I don't actually know what's correct there, though. You know, Pantry Spider, definitely better with buffs. So he would have played that. I mean, I, I, that's why I have Swipe. I, I, I definitely made this play, keeping in mind I had Swipe. But yeah, I, I could have gotten more damage in with Vicious Fledgling, but is that what you need to beat a Pirate Warrior? Not really. Okay. I guess here I will play a Vicious Fledgling, though. So he has to, like, Arcanite Reaper this down. If he draw a War Axe, though, that's not great for me. I don't think we had a 4 drop to play with a, um... With his War Axe, though, because he, he just played two 4 drops, so I really doubt he has three in his hand. It's not like he coined into it. What now? Heroic Strike, yeah, okay, sure, that's fine. So that's 4 damage not going to the face. And I can also kill that with a Hero Power. Man, Druid Hero Power is pretty good in matchups like this. It's just pretty good in the early game in general. Like, damn. What a good card. Uh, so we want to do... I want to play that. But this is more efficient. I think I want the Eggnapper, actually. Uh, in the case that he plays something like a 4-3 charge, I just want to be able to kill it with a 3-1. I don't think he can do 23 damage to me, so this is an easy rank 10. Serves him right. I mean, he's playing Scumbag, I'm playing Scumbag, but I think I'm better at playing Scumbag than he is. I mean, uh, what is he War Axe, bro? Did he not mulligan for it? Did he think that he would just beat a druid without clearing the board or something? Okay, I'll commit most of this stuff to the board here. Maybe I, I should have played this first, that was a mistake. So we want the plus three attack, just shut out the game. I'm guessing that he has a, um... Mortal Strike in his hand, considering he's not really playing anything. Hope, it, maybe he's hoping I put him at 12 life so he can get 6 extra damage from it, but if I was him, I definitely would have just played the Mortal Strike there. You can't rush this game down anymore. That's pretty sad.
Really, he has no weapons? Oh my god, that's so painful. Surely he's gonna hit that, right? Okay. Sure, then. So do I have lethal here? Um, hold on. So, three, five, six. No, just five. Oh yeah, I super have lethal. So, <laughs> what am I doing? Okay. Give me a Wind Fury. So, probably that, if I was actually going to be continuing in this game. But yeah, you're pretty dead. Poor warrior. He got Galaka crawling pretty hard. So, that's rank 10. What was the final score there? Eight wins, one loss. It's okay, yeah, decent budget deck. So, yeah, my exact deck list, I can show it once again. Um, it is roughly 1800 dust, though a couple of the cards are from Karazhan. So let's see. Living Mana uh, and Hungry Crab. Minus one, minus one, and then plus two vic uh, Vicious Fledglings. That's the only differences from the deck that was posted online, which I'm going to be linking in the description. Um, yeah, works out pretty well, but I'm really getting bored of that true deck. <laughs>